All right, folks, been getting a lot of emails actually on highly compensated employees. And I think the reason for that is because when HR does their uh, annual review of the non-discriminatory actions in their 401k plan, at the end of the year, they said, oh, you put too much money into your 401k, so they're going to send you a check, uh, which you will have to declare as regular income and pay tax on it. So I think I probably received, man, a number of emails on HCEs, highly compensated employees lately. And I, I assume it's just got to be because it's the end of the year. And they're getting these checks back saying, hey, to meet non-discriminatory measures that the IRS enforces on us, uh, too much uh, top-heavy contributions have gone into the plan. And thus, we have to send back money to make it non-discriminatory. All right, so let's talk about this lot going on in that, that uh, sentence there, or I guess that paragraph, or that yapping. All right, so let's talk about HCEs. A good, uh, I forgot who the guy was, I think his name is Nick, just emailed me. Um, you know, he's been a laborer, an hourly laborer for a long time. And, he, you know, he's starting to make some money now because hourly laborers uh, with skilled trade uh, can make decent money on an hourly basis, especially if you're getting overtime. So he's making 120000 a year. Uh, he hadn't made 120000 a year for much, and now he's starting to. So he's like, oh, man, I'm making 120000 a year. Uh, but because we have a, an, uh, an hourly weight labor force, uh, I am considered highly compensated. And HCE just means it's what's called top-heavy rules. I say you cannot have too much of your 401k plan benefiting the highly compensated employees. That is considered top-heavy. So what, when I was putting together 401k plans, we'd always make them safe harbor. And that simply meant... And look, this has been a long time, 15 years or so. But basically what that means is for every single employee that was full-time, everyone got, I think it's a 2% automatic uh, contribution to the plan, whether they contributed or not. So if you have made $40,000 a year, uh, how much is $40,000? That's 800 bucks a year? Yeah, so the, the company would put in $800 a year to uh, the 401k, even if that employee did no contributions. I think it's what it was. Did you have to do contributions? Maybe even had to do contributions. Maybe if you did contribute, I can't remember, but it's basically that's what it was. So that would make it a safe harbor, which eliminated a lot of the top heaviness components, if that makes sense. So because even without putting money into it yourself, if you're on the low end of the total pole in terms of income scale, because it's a safe harbor and because the employer automatically put, again, I think it's 2%, might have been 3% of your salary into a 401k for all full-time employees, didn't have to worry about the, the uh, discriminatory aspects of the HCE rules. So going back to this guy, Nick, that tells me that they're not doing a safe harbor plan. And I would say, look, I mean, he, look, if he's just a laborer, uh, an hourly guy, they're not going to listen to him. But if they want, but I mean, what happens here, if he's getting re refunds back from his 401k because he put too much in to violate the top heavy rules, well, the CEOs are too. Uh, fortunately, Nick, the problem is because you're a laborer, uh, the CEOs also have aspect, aspect, uh, aspect. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They also have other opportunities that you're not privy to. Highly compensated uh, deferred compensation programs. They also have employer-sponsored life insurance, which is a wonderful proposition for highly compensated employees. Uh, a deferred comp again, what you're talking about. All kind of stock options. I don't know if they're put, uh, publicly traded or not. But so the CEO is saying, or I'm just using him for example, that guy's saying, look, man, you know, I could put in... Uh, I can't put in more than $19,000 because that would violate the safe harbor, not safe harbor rules, the uh, non-discriminatory actions here. So I can only put in 19000 bucks. I can't put in more than that. Oh, I can't put in anything else. He's like, oh, no. Me and the rest of my buddies on the executive board, we're going to have uh, stock options if we're publicly traded. Hell, even if we're privately traded, we can have stock options for sure. We're going to have non-deferred uh, uh, compensation programs for us. So we don't make any money today, but we can make money in the future when we have no income. It's great. What else? You got uh, deferred comp, uh, employer, employer owned or split uh, Coley Life Insurance. Company owned life insurance. Coley, C-O-I-L-I. -I, company owned life insurance. Uh, all these things. Now, I mean, at the end of the day, is some of this deductible, some of it's not. Well, if you're the company... I mean, if you're the, the CEO, you don't give two craps if, the, if it's deductible or not to the company because you're like, dude, 
this is benefiting me personally. The company is not what I'm worried about benefiting. I'm worried about me benefiting. So if the company's got to pay a little bit more tax because they can't deduct company owned life insurance, let's just, or corporate owned life insurance, let's do that for example. You're like, no skin off my back. I still get the benefit of the corporate owned life insurance, if that makes sense. So there's a lot going on here, and I'm making, you know, kind of uh, silliness to some degree about how this works. But there are these kind of benefits that executives have access to that you don't as a laborer, even if, you know, hourly or not. Now, at the end of the day, my man, if you're married finally and jointly, you got 120000 as your income, your AGI, all right? Uh, and then you got, you said you had 19,000 able to put into a 401k. You actually put, I think he said he put in 24 and they sent him a check for five, uh, because of the, uh, the non-discriminatory aspects of the top, he- the uh, highly compensated employees being top heavy. All right. So we're just going to say you have $101,000 of AGI. If you're married filing jointly, you are in the $80,000 uh, t- uh, taxable income, which means you're in the 12% tax bracket. That's not a huge tax bracket, brother. That's not, especially, especially when it comes to what the tax brackets could be in the future with Social Security kicking in and whatnot. Never mind distributions of your IRA and 401k, as I've talked about a million times. You know, being a 12% tax bracket today, not a big deal. Now. You know, let's just say, I don't know, you have an extra $5,000 that kicks in that puts you in a 22% tax bracket. Yeah, that's a jump of 22% for the extra five. I get that. That stinks. I just don't think it's that big of a deal because it's not a huge amount. You're not paying 22% tax on the first penny. You're only paying 22% tax on the the net the, the net amount above the, marginal, the uh, taxable income of roughly eighty thousand dollars if it married filing jointly, and that's before you take any, um, if you have itemized deductions and things like that too. So I don't know if you, I mean, remember you got to choose your standard deduction or itemized deduction. I'm just using your item, your standard deduction. If you have itemized deductions, it's even better. So not much you can do. This is the problem being a W two employee. At the end of the day, you can't. There's little you can do to reduce your taxes other than a don't make it. Or B, give it away. I wish you could say otherwise, but that's just the way the ball works, man, unfortunately. So, anyway, better have the income, pay a little more tax, and not have the income at all. I hope this helps. See ya.